In this example, we want to model the water level at Monterey Bay as a function of time. Now, we're, we're given a, a, some information about the tides on a given day. So, low tide was at 6.30 a.m. and the water level was 0 0.4 feet. And then high tide was at 1.10 p.m. when the water level was 4.8 feet. And we want to model this as a trigonometric function. Um, so to do this, and also we want to model it where t is hours since noon, 12 o'clock p.m. So 11 o'clock a.m. would represent t is equal to negative 1 and so forth. So to do this, let's first draw a picture of what's going on. So the y-axis will represent the height, and the horizontal axis will represent time. So this is h of t and time. And so in general, we have something that looks like this. So if we just use a regular sinusoid, we have something that goes from low tide to high tide. So low tide is at 6.30 a.m., and then high tide is at 1.10 p.m. And the low tide had a height of 0 0.4 feet, that was the water level, and at high tide, the height of the water level was 4.8 feet. So I've already taken this information and have a visual. Um, so next, it, it will be useful to convert these times into t. So t is measured in time since 12 o'clock noon, so maybe 12 o'clock might be somewhere like this. So that's noon. So that would be t is equal to zero. So one hour and 10 minutes would be t is equal to seven over six. And then 6.30 a.m., that's almost six hours before noon, that's five and a half hours before noon, so that would be t is equal to minus 5.5. So t is equal to minus 5.5, t equals 0, and t is equal to 7 over 6. So first of all, let's look at the period of the oscillation. So let's first measure the time between low tide and high tide. So between 6.30 a.m. and 1.10 p.m., we have 6 hours and 40 minutes. So we have six hours, 40 minutes, and that's half of the period, right? Because the period is one complete cycle from low tide to high tide back to low tide. And what we have here is only half of that cycle. So this is half of the period of the sinusoidal function or the trigonometric function. So the total period is gonna be twice this. So T is gonna be twice of this so that's going to be um, 13 hours and 20 minutes. Or in other words, it's 13 and one third hours. Um, 13 times three is 39, 39 plus one is 40. So the period is 40 over three hours. Okay. So we have that down. Um, probably the next thing that we can get is the angular frequency. So the angular frequency, you'll recall, we want to set 2 pi equal to the, omega, the angular frequency omega times the period t. Because when we have sine of omega lowercase t, we want omega times t to equal 2 pi exactly when t is equal to the period. So the angular frequency is just going to be 2 pi divided by capital T, which is 2 pi divided by 40 over 3. So hence, the angular frequency omega, 2 over 40 is 1 over 20, so we get 3 pi over 20. And this would be radians per hour. So there's the angular frequency. So we're making some good progress here. Um, next let's do the shift the phase shift last because that's probably the most complicated piece um, the next two pieces are also fairly easy pieces we want to look at the midline 
and the amplitude. So the midline is going to be right here, and the amplitude is going to be like that. So the midline will be this length, and then the amplitude is that length. So that's the amplitude A, and then this is the midline B. And basically, we can basically just use this picture to figure out what the midline and the amplitude are. So first of all, let's look at the amplitude. So to find the amplitude, we want to just look at the distance between the high tide and the low tide. So 4.8 feet minus 0.4 feet is going to give us 4.4 feet, which means the amplitude is 2.2 feet. So the amplitude A is 2.2 feet. That's radians per hour for the angular frequency. So the amplitude is 2.2 feet. So then the midline is just going to be the amplitude and then plus the starting point, so plus the 0.4. So the midline is going to be 2.2 plus 0.4, 2.6 feet. Because we have 2.2 feet here, and then we have 0 0.4 down there. So the whole thing together gives me 2.6 feet. So the midline is going to be at 2.6 feet. So we have this almost entirely solved. So the height of the water level is going to be the midline plus 2.2 sine 3 pi t over 20, and then plus some shift. So we just need the phase shift. That's the final piece. Now, for the phase shift, since we're using sine, the sine wave starts at the origin, it goes up, and it goes down like that. So we'll think of the sine exactly like we see it right here. In this section between minus pi halves and plus pi halves is exactly the section you see shown in the graph above. Okay, So this is where the origin ends up. And so we're moving this over by a given factor. Right? So noon is up here. And so to find the phase shift, we need to figure out where the center is in terms of time. So since the total time between 6.30 a.m. and 1.10 p.m was six hours and 40 minutes, half of that time will be three hours and 20 minutes. So three hours and 20 minutes, we'll add that to 6.30 <clears throat> and we get 6.30 plus three hours and 20 minutes is 9.50 a.m. So 9.50 a.m. is exactly when the water level is at the midline. It's halfway between low tide and high tide. Um, what does this correspond to in terms of t? Well, this is two hours and 10 minutes before noon. So that will give me a value of t. So two hours and 10 minutes is two hours, 10 minutes. That's two and one six hours. So that's 13 over six. So it's negative 13 over six. So basically, if this, if I translate this or shift this 13 over 6 hours to the right, this point right here would be exactly when t is equal to 0. So the regular sine wave was shifted 13 over 6 hours to the left. And this is the compressed form of the sine wave that was shifted. So the shift amount. So recall we saw the shift was phi over pi. It gives you the shift in the same, or not phi over pi, phi over omega. Gives you the shift in the same units as time. So phi over omega has to equal 13 over 6. So that's a shift to the left, right? So the, sine, the regular sine wave got shifted to the left because this would normally have been over on the right, but then it got shifted to the left, 
thing was shifted over to the left by 13 over six hours. Um, in terms of units, phi is in radians, omega is radians per hour, so you can see that the units match up on both sides of this, which is why it's important to think about units every so often. We see if without the omega here, the units wouldn't be matching up. So the phase shift phi is just the angular frequency omega times 13 over 6. So phi is equal to 13 over 6 times the angular frequency, which is 3 pi over 20. Now 3 over 6 is 1 over 2. 2 times 20 is 40, so we have 13 pi over 40. So the last piece is 13 pi over 40. And that is the water level as a function of time. Now just to see if this is right, um, let's just check it with a, a couple points. So high tide was at time is equal to 7 over 6. So first I'm switching over to radian mode. 7 over 6 in for time right here. So times 3 over 20, and then plus 13 over 40 is just equal to 1 half. So when t is equal to 7 over 6, the argument here is 1 half times pi. Now sine of pi over 2 is 1, so we just get 2.6 plus 2.2, which is the high tide of 4.8. So that confirms that we got the right phase shift. Um, Another way you could have computed the phase shift, um, I think it's okay to get rid of actually probably all of this. So an alternate way you could have uh, computed the phase shift if you didn't know it. Well, we know that we had 3 pi t over 20 plus some phase shift phi. Well, we can use the fact that so here's the sine wave. So this is low tide. And then this is the high tide. And for the regular sine wave, this would have been pi over 2 and minus pi over 2. So we can use the fact that we want high tide to be at an argument of pi over 2. right? So pi over 2 should correspond to the high tide. So 3 pi t over 20 plus phi should equal pi over 2. And of course, that occurs when t is equal to 7 over 6. So we can insert 7 over 6 for t and then solve for phi. So let's see what happens when we do this. So this is 21 pi over 120 plus phi is equal to pi over 2. So supposedly phi should equal pi over 2 minus 21 pi over 120. So 1 over 2 is equal to 60 over 120. 60 minus 21 is 39. So we would get 39 over 120. They're both times pi. They're both divisible by 3, and that's equal to 13 pi over 40. So we got the same answer doing it that way. So again, the second way was to just say, well, we want high tide to be when the argument in here is equal to pi over 2. So let's take time 7 over 6, plug it in for t. So we get 3 pi over 20 times 7 over 6, add our phase shift, and set that equal to pi over 2. The first way was to look at the compressed phase shift phi over omega and set that equal to the amount of time that the sine wave is shifted by. Either way, you get this final answer, 2.6 plus 2.2 sine of 3 pi t over 20 plus 13 pi over 40. And that is the height of the water level in Monterey Bay as a function of time. And wow, I don't know how I did that. In Monterey Bay.